what exactly is a logarithm? If we look at this exponential equation here, we see that our unknown, the x, is in the exponent. If our unknown is in the exponent, we say we have an exponential equation. Well, how are we going to solve this equation? How are we going to get our unknown out of the exponent? Usually, you should have learned when solving equations, you need to use inverse operations to isolate a variable. But how do I use inverse operations to get this x out of the exponent? What we're going to do here, uh, we're going to learn that the inverse of an exponential equation is actually a logarithmic equation. And we're going to learn how to write this in logarithmic form like this log base 2 of 8 equals x. These two expressions, this exponential expression and this logarithmic expression, are actually equivalent expressions. They mean the same thing. The components of the logarithmic expression are, we have a base of the logarithm, and we have an argument of the, log of the logarithm. And the answer we get, if we were to evaluate log base 2 of 8, the answer we get is the exponent that would go on the base to get the argument. So if I were to evaluate log base 2 of 8, the answer would be the exponent that goes on 2 to give us 8. And I'm going to show you how we can evaluate that on your calculator. So on your calculator, you need to locate your log button. Uh, some calculators have a log button where you're actually going to be able to uh, change the base to be whatever you want. So that's my button right here. So I can do log base 2 of 8, and my calculator should tell me 3. The reason the answer is 3 is because 2 cubed is 8, right? 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So this is a way of getting your calculator to solve for an unknown exponent using a logarithm. Another way, if you don't have this button on your calculator where you can change the base of your log, maybe you only see this button where it doesn't show you a, a, an option to change the base. So this button actually assumes the base of the log is 10. It assumes you have the, what we call the common logarithm. So how are we going to evaluate log base 2 of 8 using only base 10 logarithms. And that's where the change of base formula comes in handy for calculators that don't have the option to change the base. We can evaluate this. I'm going to give you another equivalent expression. So a third expression that's equivalent to the two above. Log base 10 of 8. And if it's base 10, we don't have to write the base. Divided by log base 10 of 2. That's the change of base formula. So I've now written these both with base 10. If you don't see a base, we assume it's 10. Um, and this would be used to solve this expression. So log base 2 of 8 is the same as log 8 over log 2. And I'll prove that to you here. Log 8 divided by log 2. Same answer of 3. That's the exponent I would put on 2 to get the argument of 8. Right? 2 cubed equals 8. That's why the answer to this log is 8. Now I should point out here, log by itself doesn't mean anything. Right? This isn't log multiplied by 8. It's the log base 2 of 8. So this whole thing together, the log with the base and the argument, make up one number. The value of this is just 3. Let's look at another example. What if I had the example 5 to the x equals 625? This one might be a little bit more difficult to do. Uh, just you might not be as familiar with powers of 5. So I want to figure out what exponent do I put on 5 to get 625? Well, instead of guessing and checking, well, we now know an inverse function that will help us solve uh, the actual value of that, and it's the logarithmic function. I can do, so I can convert from exponential to logarithmic by taking the base of the power and writing it as the base of the log. So log base 5 of 625 will solve for me what the unknown exponent is. So these two expressions are equivalent to each other. 5 to the x equals 625. So if I evaluate this, it'll tell me the exponent that goes on the base to get the argument. And we can evaluate that in two ways. Either do type this exactly on your calculator if you can, but if you don't have uh, the button that allows you to change the base, use base 10 logs and do log of 625 divided by log 5. And we figure out the answer is 4, right? Because 5 to the power of 4 is 625. So our answer to this, x is 4. Let me prove to you, actually, that um, if you don't see a base, we assume it's 10. Like, if I gave you this expression, log 100, what should that be equal to? Well, if we assume the base is 10, 
right? We don't, we don't see it, so we assume it's 10. Well, 10 to what power equals 100? Well, 10 squared is 100. And let me show you. If I type on the calculator log 100, where's my log button? Log 100, it'll tell me the answer is 2, because 2 is the exponent you would put on a base of 10 to get the argument of 100. And let's do one more for good measure. How about log base 7 of 49? Let's solve that. Let's say log base 7 of 49 equals x. What's the value of x? Well, if we're to solve this, we're trying to figure out 7 to what exponent equals 49. And we shouldn't need our calculator for that one. We know that 7 squared is 49, right? So x is 2. Another way we could write it, do you agree that 49, 49 is just a 7 squared, right? So what we're looking for here, we're looking for 7 to what power equals 7 squared, right? 7 to what equals 7 squared? Well, 7 squared equals 7 squared, so x is 2. All right, I hope that helps. That's just a basic intro to logarithms. Um, stay tuned, and I'll post some, some more stuff about logarithms, some logarithm rules, and maybe solving some more complicated logarithmic equations.